Hello, and thank you for joining us for another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today, we are talking about a more advanced topic, that of patent application restrictions. We'll introduce what they are and discuss a few ways to go forward if you should get one. Now, restrictions will typically occur early on in the filing process before any of the claims are examined. When the application is initially looked at by the examiner, they will review it to see if it contains more than one invention. In simple terms, if the examiner feels that the claims of your patent application cover a wide enough range of material that it would be unduly burdensome to examine it, they will issue a restriction requirement. Note that some applications do not receive in a restriction requirement, so it doesn't always happen, but it is a fairly common occurrence. So let's take a look at how a typical restriction works. Often, a patent application will have different claim families. For example, here in these sample claims, we see that claims 1 to 5 are for a system and claims 6 to 8 are for a method of using that system. A typical restriction would restrict along claim families. And so, in this example, the claims would be divided into a first group for the systems claim and a second group for the method claims. So, the next order of business is to select a group. The inventor or applicant then needs to elect a group, either group 1 or group 2 in our example. Suppose we pick group 1. Then group 1, in our case the system claims, will get examined. The method claims which are unselected won't get examined at this time. However, we don't need to forfeit or abandon those claims. The unselected group of claims does not have to be forfeited, as I was saying. They can be examined by filing another application called a divisional application that includes the unselected groups of claims. Note that there is typically some cost associated with this as there are additional filing fees to the US Patent Office. Typically, if using a patent professional, there may be some preparation costs to file the divisional application. But for filing a divisional application, it is typically less than the cost of a full application because the divisional application is basically a copy of your original application, but including only one of the unelected groups of claims. Okay, so traversing. You can traverse the restriction. In a simple restriction, it is common to make an election without traverse, but even if you traverse, which is basically disputing the restriction and asking for reconsideration, even if you do traverse, you still need to make a selection of a group. In the event that the patent office does not agree with you and they do not uh, remove the restriction, then you have to have a group selected so that they can start the examination process. So which group should you pick? There are various techniques um, which include uh, picking the most relevant group to the product or business that, uh, that uh, the application pertains to. Another technique is to pick the largest group, the group with the most claims in it. Another technique is to pick the most detailed embodiments so that you have the most amount of things to work with to help uh, get a patent application. Use caution if you're selecting the broadest group because if you select the broadest group and uh, the details you end up needing to actually get a patent application are in a restricted out group, you might not be able to get a patent application uh, on those broad claims, in which case you'll be forced to file a divisional application before you're able to uh, get anything. So just uh, use caution in that regard. Now, often... As I was saying previously, with a restriction along claim families, as with our example, the response is typically filed without traverse. And the reason, primary reason, is to avoid additional discussion on the record. In other words, it's generally a good idea to not 
uh, talk too much about your case prior to its examination, so the non-traversal avoids that situation. If you are going to traverse, you need to show why the multiple groups of claims should be treated as part of the same invention. And it may be worthwhile to do a traversal in what I call a smithereens rejection. And we will talk about that very shortly. There's one other thing I want to point out, which is a visual restriction. A visual restriction is when the examiner restricts based on figures, not claims. An example would be where you get a restriction where it says you can either choose the embodiment shown in figure one, figure two, or figure three. Now the same strategy applies. It's up to the applicant to determine which figures to elect and which claims they correspond to. And the same criteria apply, you know, what's most germane to the business, what has the most amount of features or uh, parts that you can work with to try to get uh, something allowed. So here is a smithereens rejection, and this does happen from time to time. The examiner may restrict into multiple groups. And when there's a lot of groups, and by a lot I'll say more than three, I call it a smithereens rejection. This is a case where you may want to consider a traversal to see if you can get at least some of the groups consolidated. The reason is that if the groups carry so few claims, it can be hard to get a patent application allowed. The reason is that the subject matter from the non-elected groups can be off limits. So it can't really be used during the examination process. Hence, if you get such a restriction, you may want to consider a traversal to try to rejoin at least some of the groups. Here, our eight claims are restricted into six different groups, which really hampers our ability to try to get an application allowed. So just to recap, uh, restrictions are used by the Patent Office to reduce the amount of claims that will be examined. The original set of claims are divided into groups, and the inventor has to elect a group for examination. The other claims that you didn't elect can be examined through additional patent application filings called divisionals. And the applicant does have the option to traverse the rejection if they feel that is the best thing to do. So hopefully this gives you at least a little introduction into restrictions. It's a fairly common thing, so if you get one, don't panic, but it's good to understand what it is and also to choose carefully um, what you're planning to elect uh, because especially if you're on a limited budget and you need to try to get something allowed, uh, choosing which group to elect becomes very uh, important. So again, thanks for checking out Inventor's Quick Tips, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again.